So even though people like Matt Walsh and Michael Knowles have really large platforms and transphobic bigots are especially loud on social media, that doesn't change the fact that most Americans are not buying this anti-trans hysteria and they're not falling for anti-trans propaganda by and large in red states too. For example, a Mason-Dixon poll released in late February found that 71% of Kentucky residents oppose laws banning gender-affirming care for minors. And yes, that includes 62% of Republican Party voters. Now, at the national level, voters are a little bit more divided based on party affiliation than people in Kentucky, at least according to this poll conducted by NPR and Ipsos, but they found back in 2022 that only 31% of Americans support bans on gender-affirming care for trans youth, while 47% oppose them, and 21% aren't even familiar with this issue at all. So after Republicans have spent nearly two years preaching about parental autonomy and parental rights, the sentiment among the American population seems to be that Parents should have the right to make decisions about their child when it comes to health care. And that includes gender affirming care. Now, since 2022, Republicans have been able to get their own base more on board with anti-trans hysteria, excluding exceptions like Kentucky. But overall, American opposition towards bans on gender affirming care has actually increased since the right ramped up their hysteria. Ari Drennan shared the results from this Grinnell College national poll conducted by Selzer and Co. And as you can see, a majority of Americans oppose bans on gender affirming care. This includes 78% of Democrats and. 52% of independents. And while anti-trans propagandists have successfully driven up support for these bans among the GOP's base, it seemingly backfired among the general population and opposition to these bans have actually grown. And I think this is because most Americans aren't monsters. When they're informed about how gender-affirming care is medically necessary, deemed such by the experts, and how it reduces suicidality, well, of course they support it. Because normal working class Americans don't have a political or career incentive to remain performatively opposed to gender affirming care after learning that it saves lives. But the Republicans who spend an unusual amount of time regularly peddling transphobia couldn't fight past the cognitive dissonance that this poll gave them. And uh, they decided to all suddenly become experts in polling methodology and they tried to debunk it. And as you could expect, that didn't go too well. For example, Matt Walsh claims that the pollster doesn't provide respondents with enough information, explaining, drop the gender from in care euphemism and ask people how they feel about the sterilization and chemical castration of children, then come back and let us see the results. Now, I, for one, think that including more information in polls is not a bad thing, but the reason why legitimate pollsters would not word a poll that way is one because it's bullshit and two what you're calling for is obviously push polling where you purposefully phrase a question in a particular manner to generate a specific response usually to suit your narrative polls have to be worded in a neutral way in order to actually gauge people's feelings but matt walsh doesn't care about that he actually wants his feelings to be affirmed and since this poll doesn't do that well he's triggered but there's more because professional pollster cat turd 2 whose twitter poll was shared by the maga war room yes this is a real graphic to my knowledge and was even cited by donald trump himself on truth social and also at a rally 69 says that the Grinnell College poll was, quote, bullshit with three exclamation points. And, you know, as someone who conducts reputable scientific polls on Twitter, I take it that they definitely know what they're talking about. Now, the right-wing astroturfed group Gays Against Groomers took issue with the sampling size, stating that 1,000 adults is not representative of the entire nation. Now, they then retweeted a much more accurate Twitter poll by user LB, who found that 78.9% of their right-wing followers are against gender affirming care and since this poll aligns with their beliefs well it's of course more accurate now i feel like this is obvious but this is a poll it's not supposed to be a fucking census and ari pointed this out too you literally can't ask every single person in the country their thoughts about something so what do you do you get a sample that's representative of the general population so that when you extrapolate and you average the results of other polls, you're able to reasonably gauge where the public is at with regards to a particular issue. This is how 
all reputable polls work, including ones that they agree with where it shows that Trump is in the lead and beating DeSantis. A poll's methodology isn't suddenly flawed because you don't like it. You just have cognitive dissonance that you're refusing to fight past. But there's more. This person simply responded to the poll saying that the person who shared it sounds, quote, vaccinated, which I guess is, is you know, that's reasonable. This sounds like a solid counter argument. And there were lots of other people who took issue with the wording as well, such as William A. Jacobson, who pays $8 a month for his Twitter checkmark. And this individual agrees with Matt Walsh that the poll is basically biased because it wasn't worded in a biased way so as to produce results that he'd agree with. Sonia Richardson, who also pays $8 a month for her Twitter checkmark, agrees with Cat Turd that, you know, the entire poll is just bullshit. So it's a flat out lie. I refuse to believe this. <laughs> it's it's unequivocally wrong. Alex, who pays $8 a month for his Twitter checkmark, rejects the finding that 78% of Democrats feel this way. And this Twitter user who pays for his blue checkmark claims that this poll is actually an example of selective and manipulated statistics. See, because Grinnell would be reputable only if they exclusively poll Republicans and ask them if chopping off kids' dicks is good or bad. That would constitute a reputable poll, according to these dumb fucks. Sherry S., who also pays $8 a month for her Twitter checkmark, says, lie harder. Hank, who pays $8 a month for his Twitter checkmark, calls it total and utter bullshit. And finally, TK Eagle, who also pays $8 a month for their Twitter checkmark, says, yeah, I don't believe this for a second, liar. Prove it. They have proven it. It's just you you don't want to believe it. Now, you might be thinking, well, Mike, a lot of these responses that you shared are from people, accounts in particular, with zero engagement, no likes, no retweets. So why share them at all? Because that lack of engagement proves my point. Even on Twitter, they're in an echo chamber and they refuse to believe it. And despite how loud they might seem to all of us, they only represent a small minority of the population. But of course, these screenshots aren't an accurate sample of all of Twitter or even motherfuckers who pay for Twitter, okay? But the point is that these folks refuse to accept that everyone doesn't agree with them. Most people, in fact, disagree with them. With that being said, the transphobes are having to grapple with the reality that they are once again on the wrong side of history. And that's what we're seeing. The meltdown is their form of cope, I guess. But regardless of what they or the general public thinks, it really doesn't matter in the end because civil rights are non-negotiable. So even if they're able to turn public opinion against trans people, that doesn't change the fact that civil rights should be guaranteed because, I mean, look at the history. The overwhelming majority of Americans were once against gay marriage. That didn't mean that gay couples shouldn't have been able to get gay married. You understand? So it really doesn't matter at the end of the day what they think and what Americans think, quite frankly. But still, it's nice to watch bigots cope after their bubbles are bursted because they assumed that everyone would accept their genocidal anti-trans bullshit. But in actuality, most Americans don't. Most Americans are focused on other things. They're not focused on policing the lives of trans people like Matt Walsh or Michael Knowles. And I'm sorry that the reality of this poll offends you, but facts don't care about your feelings, snowflakes. So shut the fuck up, get a hobby, and leave trans kids alone, you hate-mongering sociopathic cunts. Up yours. Up yours. Up yours. Sons of bitches. Bitches. Woke moralism. Woke moralism. Woke moralism. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. The genital way. region was exposed. I let her have her way.